Welcome everyone. Welcome to Farmers on the Frontline as we mark Fairtrade Fortnight 2022 with stories from seven Fairtrade businesses working with farmers in six countries who grow five Fairtrade ingredients. Coming together to put a spotlight on how they are impacted by and are coming to terms with their shared and crucial challenge of our time, climate change. To kick off the program today, it's over to Mike Gidney, who heads the Fairtrade Foundation in the UK. Well, look, hello everybody. I'm uh, Mike Gidney. I'm Chief Executive of the Fairtrade Foundation, and welcome to this latest event in the Choose the World You Want Festival. This fortnight, we're asking people to take positive climate action, as you know. And I guess given the storms around all of us this month, I'm sure the urgency of this message won't be lost on anyone. As much as climate change affects all of us, we know, of course, that farmers and workers in the global south often feel the impacts the most, with climate chaos affecting their ability to farm. This isn't, I mean, it's not only a moral scandal, you know, given how little lower income countries have contributed to global warming over the years, but it's also a major problem for us, for global trade and food security. It's in all of our interests to solve this, and it's a massive set of problems, but there is hope. There is hope. It's really important for people to remember that. There are experts all around the world working on these problems today. 1.8 million farmers and workers are involved in fair trade, and they use the extra funding they receive through fair trade to invest in their families and their farms. And today we'll be hearing from some of them. Farmers on the front line, working with a group of the most dynamic, innovative fair trade brands around. Fair trade has long been led by these dedicated champions, mission driven companies who are 100% fair trade. They are so much part of our past and absolutely central to our future. So today we're going to be talking about coffee in Peru with Cafe Direct and in Uganda with Shared Interest. We're going to be talking about cocoa in Ghana with Divine Chocolate, coconuts in Sri Lanka with JTS, Nuts from Nicaragua with Liberation. And finally, the amazing olive oil from Palestine with Zaytun. That's such a wealth of experience. I think we're in for a real treat. So let's get cracking. Over to you guys. El cambio climático cada día está siendo más notorio tanto en Perú como en Latinoamérica. Estamos teniendo casos devastadores que, que se dan cada cierto tiempo, ¿no? fenómenos del niño, periodos muy intensos de lluvias, periodos frecuentes también de sequía, ¿no? inundaciones, pérdidas de cultivo. Cada vez se acortan más los periodos que hacen frecuentes los fenómenos y tenemos cada vez que estar mejor preparados para enfrente, enfrentarlos o mitigar estos efectos. Nosotros en la sierra y selva, partes de montaña donde se siembra el café, los productores se enfrentan a periodos más cortos de lluvias, pero mucho más intensas, como también a, a periodos prolongados de sequía. Todo esto sabemos que es por el cambio climático. Hay lugares donde antes existía café que hoy es imposible sembrar. Ya la sequía, las plagas no lo permiten, ¿no? Entonces, los productores en sí también. Family in Asakwa, Michelle Scassetti, our Cape Coast Society. May I remember my name in your mobile and Nancy? May I cry a perku cook, Queenie? Women start crying about a behind your pa. A whole dry brain there, in whom la, us today, I do do ye food. In whom last a day, ye do ye. Ye do dear ye brew, another ye do ye ye do me. I feel so I do more a behind ye, cool cool. I do my papa papa papa, ye go so, I bring a green now, so still I am one the ha will cool cool no do. In such a queer powerful agriculture for what I bring ye in there. Ye will do dear, in dear. Oh, ye coco no more. A mamma and you and you a tumor at the coco no do. Nay, in Catuano, so you were do dear, and broad in India, near the better thing. 
no koko na atu na yin pon pon ama ma yu nsa kra no amashi koko no me do do eh da mi ndra be na o ma fu mu me tun me ton bi me de ta didi me de bi su bo e menua mu nti me hwe de yakopon ba ye ma adun ma da mi nya ma na o wa fu ni na o botu ma aboa koko no ma e be bra ma da ti etu ma so na me nya bi adi I don't know. Mangi that's why I Lastimosamente nosotros estamos en la zona de, de mayor riesgo en el cambio climático. Pasa lo sí, que pasó el año pasado, que eso no lo habíamos tenido nunca, de tener dos huracanes en momentos que ya debió haber terminado el invierno. O sea que el invierno debió haber terminado en octubre y tuvimos huracanes en noviembre. Y lluvias hasta el 22 de noviembre. Eso tiene un efecto grande no solamente en los temas de producción, para mí afecta todo el ambiente, todo lo que tiene que ver con vegetación, Hemos observado que las plantas tienen, están locas a veces, florecen en tiempos que no es, lo, no es su tiempo. Hay mucha, el año pasado tuvimos efectos de plagas que no tuvimos en los, bueno, en mi vida no la hemos tenido. ¿Conoces chichimeque? Saltón. Eso nunca había comido a Jonjolí, la planta de Jonjolí pequeña, y el año pasado sí empezaron a comer. Suponemos que su alimentación natural ya no existe, sí. se ha perdido y ahora tienen que comer lo que encuentran. Entonces para mí todo eso tiene que ver con el cambio climático. Hay muchas especies animales que han tenido que mutar, igual que nosotros, creo que mutan más rápido tal vez que nosotros. Nosotros ya somos una especie mutada. During the implementation of uh, coffee activities, Buku has had a lot of challenges because of the issues of climate change. And these issues have affected the farmers and uh, the institution at large. The challenges we face are floods, long drought, heavy rainfall that comes with the hailstone and storm, Resistance of pests due to long, long drought. Coffee berries are becoming smaller. And we, we hear and get reports that by the 2150, coffees will stop flowering. This was a report uh, from Oxfam. If uh, issues are not followed up, so everyone has to ensure that climate change adaptation becomes an issue. Then we have less income from the coffee due to coffee quality challenges. تغير المناخ يعني بضر بالشجر وبالعالم كله لأنه حسينا إنه صار المطر أقل نسبة المطر 
تكل وكذلك عطاء الشجر يكل وصارت تتغير مواسم الازهار والنضج يعني كان النضج بشهر 11 صار بشهر 10 فلذلك صار تغير هناك وكل انتاج صار كل انتاج الزيتون واللوز وجميع الاشجار يعني حوالي 30% تغيرت هذا الانتاج وتغير الشجر يعني حتى الشجر صار كان يظل اخضر اخضر صار اليوم الشجر تحس فيه على يباس نعم صحيح التربة صرنا نحسنها عن طريق الزبل الطبيعي يعني كل سنتين ثلاثة بنجيب زبل طبيعي بنفرد الأرض من يحرثها من ومن جدد عملية التزبيل اللي هي الزبل الطبيعي هو الأساس اللي بيعطي التربة بتغيرها وبيعطيها بظل يعني الشجرة تتغذى بشكل ممتاز I hope you all found that um, an interesting interesting watch um, it really does demonstrate to me uh, how far reaching the effect of climate change is for all of these different farmers growing different crops across the world um, so we've now got a Q&A session um, so please do get your questions in for all of the representatives of the different fair trade companies here. Um, we have got um, a good sort of half an hour if you'd like to send through some questions. And we've also got information about how our, how our brands companies work with farmers and supporting them with climate change. Um, so I'm Lauren Morris and I'm from uh, Cafe Direct. And... Um, I can tell you a little bit about how Cafe Direct works with, with farmers in supporting them with, with climate change. And um, essentially, we do this in a few sort of main ways. Um, you saw earlier uh, our video, the Cafe Direct video featured uh, Raoul Tours from the Bagua Grande Coffee uh, Cooperative in Peru. And Raul is actually on our board as well. So he's a farmer who helps govern and direct our business. And we've worked in partnership with that uh, cooperative since the company started uh, 30 years ago. And it's very much through these long term partnerships with farmers and by trading directly with the cooperatives, farmers tell us firsthand how climate change is absolutely the number one biggest challenge that they're facing at the moment. And experts predict that by 2050, the land used for coffee will actually have reduced by 50% because uh, it'll no longer be suitable. And um, really, because farmers are very central to Cafe Direct's mission, its reason for being, it's important for us to be working with them and supporting them and dealing them with the climate crisis. Um, and the main ways we do this, of course, is, is fair trade, really fundamental to our business model. 100% of the products are fair trade and um, always been fair trade since Cafe Direct started 30 years ago. And over that period, over 21 million has been paid in fair trade premiums, which goes direct to, directly to the cooperatives to, to support them in many ways, including battling um, the climate uh, problems that they cause on the farms and the, the fair trade standards really work to protect the environment in lots and lots of different ways, um, including helping them support and reduce their carbon footprint, um, managing pests and diseases, um, using practices that are much kinder to the earth, but it also just helps them adapt to the changes that are happening on their farm due to climate and so they can still earn an income and they can still support their families and put food on the table. Um, a second major way in which we support farmers is through our farmer-led partner, which is called Producers Direct, which is a charity that Cafe Direct set up in 2009. And um, they run development programs and support programs for farmers in Latin America and Africa. And they run many initiatives such as training centers. They learn about organic practices, for example, um, reforestation projects. There's one that's been going on in the Andes in Peru, which has um, been a great uh, case study, which is now being continued to sort of rolled out across 
Peru, and it's really worked to stabilise rainfall. Um, it's provided shade for the local coffee crops that are growing at the cooperative there, protecting soil erosion, and also the local community that are actually planting those trees can earn carbon credits as well. So it's very, it's been very, very beneficial for that whole community there. Um, and also they support farmers in finding other ways to earn income, so diversifying their income, so growing other crops like bananas or keeping bees, so that when their crops yield are too low to be making enough money um, due to the climate changes, um, they can still continue earn, to earn money. And producers direct have seen lots and lots of uh, success through increasing farmers' income uh, in the face of the climate change. Um, but I should hand on now to uh, hand over now to, uh, uh, to somebody else. I'll uh, thank you for listening. I'm going to hand you over to to Don at Divine Chocolate. Thank you, thank you, Lauren, and welcome everybody again to this um, really interesting um, webinar about how. Um, farmers across the world, across our different commodities, <clears throat> are fighting climate change, um, with, of course, assistance from fair trade and fair trade businesses such as ourselves. So at Divine, we are driven by a mission to champion needs of farmers, improve their lives, uh, of their families and communities, and build a more sustainable world so farmers can thrive and prosper. Um, a really interesting aspect of our business model is that we are co-owned. We are co-owned by 100,000 farmers in Ghana who supply the cocoa for our chocolate. And this means that above and beyond the fair trade minimum price, which is really important, and the fair trade uh, premium that they can use to invest in social and community projects, um, the farmers get a share of, their, of our distributable profits. Uh, and they're also an important uh, decision maker uh, in, in our business um, with 40% representation on our board. We also support farmers through our producer support, uh, producer support program, uh, support development program. And traditionally we've sort of worked on areas like women's empowerment, adult literacy, numeracy, um, and labor rights. But given the sort of the challenge um, we as a world are facing. Uh, we're really delighted that beginning this year, we're gonna to add to um, the contributions we're making in terms of sustainable agriculture. And in partnership with many other um, stakeholders uh, like Halba in Switzerland, we're joining a multi-stakeholder uh, collaboration to invest in agroforestry and help our farmers in Coapacoco build more sustainable livelihoods. Um, in particular, we are looking at um, assisting across a um, 30 hectares area, and this will impact around 120 farmers, but it's to provide financing um, so that agroforestry can be supported, biodiversity could be enhanced, the fertility of the soil can be enhanced, and also through agroforestry, farmers could also raise other crops, food crops, uh, uh, above and beyond the cocoa, which will help increase um, food security apart from, from income. So that is a little snapshot of um, the unique business model that um, Divine um, is proud to talk about and, and, and work with farmers um, and the increased investments we are making, um, particularly to help farmers fight climate change. Of course, climate change is here. We are seeing floods now um, in Malawi, which is another cooperative, Kasintula, that we are working with in addition to um, Kwapakoko in Ghana. And so we are looking at what types of flood assistance we can provide, because uh, at the moment, it's to, just to try and get back to um, business as usual. So this is an important area and we're sort of evaluating um, the assistance we can provide uh, to uh, Kasintula on that. Um, looking at some of the other questions coming through. Um, um, yes, uh, one of the questions is around how fair trade or being part of the fair trade movement is important. And as you can see, it's collaborations like this where uh, brands coming together and understanding the challenges and um, best practice from the different businesses that is certainly a key benefit of being part of a, a larger system 
uh, to support farmers. So um, we're, we, we know that we're not alone uh, and being part of the fair trade system gives us great strength as businesses to support our farmers. Um, I would now like to uh, call Tracy and um, Tracy uh, at um, JTS, if you would like to uh, take some of the questions uh, from the audience. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Don. Hello, yes, I'm Tracy from JTS. JTS is Just Trading Scotland. We started 13 years ago with the arrival of a container of Kilimbero rice um, from Malawi just in time for Fair Trade Fortnight 2009. Um, we continue to work with the rice farmers in Malawi, but we also now import from six other producer groups ac across Africa and Asia, including the coconut milk producers that you saw featured in the video. Um, we're working with a number of our producers, again, partly through our parent charity, um, the Valmore Trust, um, on climate change related projects. Um, but I've seen that there are some specific questions around the Mars um, project and sort of nut milks and, and similar in the um, Q&A, so I'll try and answer some of those. Um, we started importing the coconut milk from, from Sri Lanka in 2012. Um, and initially we just imported standard coconut milk, um, but we found that there wasn't really a strong market for it at the time. And we shifted to, um, as well as being fair trade, to an organic certified milk, which we found a much stronger market in the UK for that. I think um, that's an indication of consumers' concern for both the goods, the people and the planet aspects of um, of, of buying. Um, we absolutely support the farmers in their organic um, credentials as well as their fair trade credentials. Um, one of the things that the farmers have said to us that is really valuable as being part of the fair trade sort of cooperative um, and the farmers that we've spoken to are have be previously been in non-fair trade cooperatives um, is the knowledge sharing that they get through being part of that fair trade um, group on things they can do to improve their um, yields, to deal with um, climate change, etc. And the the example that was given in the video around um, just trying to retain what water there is. So there are issues with drought and, and I think at times with flood, but with drought in particular. And the example they gave of, of just putting the husks around the base of, of the tree and sort of building up from, from there to create some water. I don't, I'm afraid, know more about the sort of water project that they're talking about in the video um, that they're trying to work towards. And that's certainly something, having seen it on the video um, that's just in from our producers, I think that we would want to know more about and to see how we could help with that. One of the key ways we can help, obviously, is to continue to buy the product and to buy more of it to create more fair trade premium to allow them to invest more in in the products. I think in terms of the nut milk question that I saw, um, one of the reasons we are seeing an increase in demand for coconut milk is alternative diets. Maybe not using a tin of coconut milk as something to pour on your cereal. I don't think many people do that. I don't know. Um, but I think people are using it as a dairy-free alternative in cooking um, and to support a, a vegan um, lifestyle or, or reduced meat, um, even just to use something different in their cooking. And we are definitely seeing an interest in, in recipes that use um, the coconut milk as a, as a dairy alternative, whether that be an ice cream recipe or um, just a curry that doesn't use a dairy content. Um, I don't know anything more about the wider question on nut alternatives. Uh, maybe somebody from, from Liberation can comment on that later. Um, the other thing I'd just like to say is, is around some of our other producer groups. So we are working, as I said, with seven producer groups in total, and we have some interesting projects going on with with all of, well, not all of them, with, with most of them. Um, and what possibly one that's most inspiring is a project um, that actually won a Scottish Fair Trade Forum Climate Award, working with our rice farmers, where taking the rice husks and using that to create a briquette of fuel is both helping the women farmers set up a business themselves and 
sort of have a, be empowered, but it's also like, the idea came from them, which is brilliant, but it's also really helping with deforestation because they're no longer having to um, collect wood from the forests and, and um, take down trees to, to, to then have um, fuel in, in their homes. Um, and unlike the, the um, sugar farmers that we just heard about, our rice farmers are in the north of, of Malawi and have actually been experiencing drought rather than flood. But thankfully, the rains did just arrive last week and they are now able to start um, planting. That is a lot later than it would have been previously and I think is a real concern in terms of climate change, just that unreliability of, of harvest. I think I've used up my time, so I need to hand over to Bernadette from Liberation. Thank you. Thanks, Tracy. Hello, uh, I'm Bernadette from Liberation Foods. Uh, so Liberation is a fair trade certified community interest company. Um, we work with uh, smallholder nut farmers around the world across three continents. Um, five of these groups had come together to form something called the International Nut Cooperative, which Wan is actually president of, Wan who you saw in the video. Um, and supporting 35,000 farmers across the world, they are also majority shareholders of Liberation. Um, as we've seen through all of these videos, the farmers that we work with, many of them have uh, been hit with serious weather changes that have caused major damage, destruction and instability within the last year alone. Um, however, individually, each of these cooperatives with the support of the business that comes in through companies like Liberation and also through the use of fair trade premiums, they are continuing to develop different ways to become more climate resilient and promote sustainable, environmentally friendly ways of farming. Um, to give you just a few examples of what the farmers that we are doing uh, that we are working with are doing at the moment. In Nicaragua, uh, technicians are developing their own organic uh, homemade fertilizers and pesticides and offering free training to others uh, to learn how to do the same within their own smallholder farms uh, to avoid the import of expensive and damaging agrochemicals. They've also used the fair trade premium to invest in solar panels, um, we have co-ops in Malawi that are really investing in and promoting the benefits of uh, climate smart agroforestry in, uh, for macadamia farming. Uh, in Kerala, they hold an annual uh, festival to celebrate and educate on the importance of crop diversity uh, to develop climate resilience and um, uh, to also uh, educate around non-intrusive uh, traditional farming methods. So Liberation's role is to support them to grow their businesses. Uh, we are essentially a sales and marketing arm to their trade um, and helping them to convert produce into finished products to sell in the European market. Um, and along with that, we are starting more and more to look for opportunities to source value added products. So products that are made at source in the countries of origin, which there, I saw a couple of questions around um, nut milk as Tracy talked about. We haven't yet started going into the nut milk field, but it's right, this is kind of a very a, a big developing industry. Um, we ideally would look into sourcing at origin some of these products, which would avoid uh, some of the destructive forms of farming because the farmers that we work with are all very small. So there would be no monocrops, no any of that, which often call is one of the major issues. Um, so that's where we're planning to go. This is where we're pushing is for value added products. Um, and uh, as the INC are a majority shareholder of the company, they're really leading on it and uh, helping us direct where we want to go, which seems like the fairest way uh, for us to do business uh, with them in collaboration. Um, I don't want to take up more time because I realize we're running out. So I want to hand it over to uh, Laura at Shared Interest. Thanks Bernadette and hi everyone and um, thank you so much for joining um, and really hope, really hope you enjoyed um, the film just now. Um, so Shared Interest was um, founded 31 years ago now as a unique solution to the problems fair trade farmers faced with access and finance. Um, we run as an ethical investment organisation providing fair trade farmers and artisans 
in developing countries with um, the finance that they need to sustain their businesses. And this year we supported almost 400,000 farmers across 49 countries, so our reach is um, quite wide. And many of our customers are facing challenges as you can expect as a result of climate change. And we are working closely with them to overcome these difficulties by providing finance and training. Um, one of our customers was um, Bukonzo, who um, were featured in the, the film just now. Um, and how we're able to do this is through our um, support of our loyal investors and donor network. Um, we currently have over 10,000 investors who are spread across the UK. And these investors invest over £51 million in um, shared interest currently. Um, so just looking through the questions, and there's been some great questions, thank you. So um, one of them I've got here is um, how many farmers are being supported by the um, the Bacondo Cooperative and um, how are they being impacted? Um, so Bacondo is actually quite a large coffee cooperative um, and they support the livelihoods of over 1,200 farmers currently. Um, unfortunately, when Jacinta um, contacted us in the past, um, the cooperative actually needed urgent care after they faced severe flooding in the village um, and also the surrounding area. Um, they had faced really heavy rainfall, which had caused five of the rivers to burst their banks. And over 35,000 of the farmers were actually displaced. Um, so that was the farmers and their, their families. Um, in Africa, the percentage of women in leadership roles remains low. Um, but there's also a growing movement in the coffee sector in particular to empower women to grow and market their own products. So, um, this cooperative is a really good example of um, women's empowerment as um, Jacinta is the general manager of the cooperative and she's really sort of taken the cooperative forward. Um, it's one of the few cooperatives in Africa actually to be managed by women, um, which is a really nice example. Um, and Jacinta is just one example really of the inspiration of women leading businesses or communities through the pandemic and beyond. Um, so, yeah, thank you to um, Jacinta for taking part in the film and I will pass on, um, I believe, to, to Bridget at Zaytoon. Thank you. Hi, everyone. Um, I'm Bridget from Zaytoon. Um, we're a social enterprise and we import uh, olive oil dates, Zata, Frike and Maftul uh, from Palestine to the UK. Um, the question that we get asked, and I can see it in different forms in the Q&A today, is just what can farmers in Palestine do to mitigate climate change, given that they are farming under occupation? Um, and I think the most important thing that farmers are telling us is that they've always farmed in an eco-friendly way. They've always farmed um, in a climate resilient way. So what they're doing is returning and maintaining the, the skills and the farming mechanisms that they've they've always used through the generations and so as Howard mentioned in the video um i think he mentioned the intercropping which what that does is that when they plant different plants around the olive trees then it improves the soil quality um and allows the soil to maintain moisture so that if the rains don't come or they're sporadic then there is they have mitigated against the fact that the rains are becoming more sporadic um, and also the manure that he talked about as well, that improves the soil quality. So the way that they're approaching the challenges which they're facing is looking at their soil health and what they can do to maintain that. Um, and I think what fair trade does is to support them um, in doing that. So when farmers know that they're going to be able to sell olives for olive oil at a fair price, then that allows them to plan and to um, invest in the seeds for the crops around the trees and for the extra labour that's needed to lay that manure around and to, to prune the trees at the right time of year. Um, so I think that's yeah that's how they're using the age-old skills um, but also combined with the new science and they know that that's what they can do to, to support themselves and how we can support them too. Um, I think the other there's a couple of other questions one is that how are the olives harvested and they're harvested by hand and they're harvested during the day so they're not machine led and that by harvesting by hand during the day, as they've always been harvested, that doesn't impact on birds nesting at night. So that's another sort of eco friendly um, mechanism which they have, have used forever. Um, and I saw one of the questions was about shipping. So we I think it's about a year ago, we um, implemented good shipping, which um, is, uh, you know, trying to support 
climate change um, within our, our business. So that's one of the things that we have implemented. Um, and there's just two other things I wanted to mention. One is that if you do you want to, there's something about spreading the message in one of the questions. And one of the options that we give people is the ability to travel to Palestine. There's a Visit Palestine page on our web um, website, and that's for you to go and see and you to talk to the producers and then come back and, and share your experiences and share the stories that you learned. Um, and then one other thing is that we, uh, um, Howard, who you saw in the in the film, he is actually live on a Zoom tomorrow from the Olive Grove. So if you have questions um, that you'd like to put directly to him, then you have that option tomorrow. There's a link on our website. Yes, this is Don and Divine. Um, so one of the questions that actually had come through was, you know, how can farmers um, actually um, learn about best practices to, to mitigate and adapt to climate change. And it was sort of a broad question directed to all the brands. But I was also thinking, Mike, this might be a great opportunity for you to also comment on how fair trade as a movement. I know there is, for instance, the, the climate pledge that uh, has, was announced with COP26, but it'd be interesting to understand how um, fair trade is supporting farmers um, you know, and, and give them the resources and the knowledge to fight uh, climate change a bit more. Are there any comments you'd like to share with us? Yeah, I can just quickly pop in on this one. Um, it's it's obviously a, a hugely important part of fair trade campaigning at the moment. So, you know, we were very active um, uh, at the COP uh, talks in Glasgow before Christmas. Um, and we, we're sort of shifting the way we do things at the Fair Trade Foundation, which I think is, you know, many of the brands that we're hearing from here are well, you know, way ahead on this, but we're trying to be as farmer led as possible. So, you know, we had a delegation of producers at COP who started to make connections with their own government delegations who are also at COP. So in in, in uh, Ghana, for example, uh, you know, we, we, we managed to get um, uh, Bismarck, who's one of the producers who's obviously active this Fair Trade format, but who was also at COP to in to meet his his um, government delegation and so they're starting to talk so the hope is through those kinds of links as these intergovernmental talks continue government delegations in the global south will be able to hear more and more directly from fair trade farmers and therefore be able to put their specific asks forward in terms of financing um, at the same time we're keeping pressure on the, uh, the uk government there is an ask this fair trade fortnight for people to write to their mps asking for the finance that has been promised, you know, this mythical $100 billion a year that has been promised by uh, intergovernmental groups to, you know, to be activated and actually to, you know, to get the money out the door and put it into the hands of farmers because it's needed now. Um, and then at, at, within the sort of fair trade system, the number of things we're doing, I mean, you know already, of course, because you're also very involved in this, that um, fair trade farmers and workers for a long time have been investing their own premium money in uh, climate uh, adaptation and mitigation. Um, and uh, yeah, that's continuing. Uh, we have uh, climate academies now set up all around the world, uh, being run by the producer networks, which is simply a mechanism for producer groups to share their experience you know, peer review and support each other to, uh, you know, learn tips and tricks. And that's incredibly important. Farmers being well organized and therefore able to learn from each other. It's a fundamental principle of cooperation. Um, and that's really growing. And it's really exciting, actually. Um, also, we're seeing as the, you know, the kind of cycle of fair trade standards, you know, because they're always, as you know, under review, the pricing and the elements, of different standards, um, the uh, environmental focus and the climate focus is increasing. So, so there is a strong call from farmers, from the farming networks, for us to incorporate, you know, ever more rigorous uh, environmental standards within the, the kind of classic fair trade standards methodology. I mean, and that's a good thing, obviously. To say thank you very much, Mike, for that comprehensive answer. Um, really informative. And uh, over to you, Bridget, um, for uh, the last part of our program today. Thank you, Don. I'm just going to share my screen and share a short video from Rio. And then after that, Rio will take over in person. Hello, everyone. I'm Rio from Tradecraft, and I hope you enjoyed meeting the farmers on the front line of climate change. I want to share an exciting opportunity to enter a competition where you win products from every brand that you've seen on the webinar today. Inside this premium hamper is fair trade chocolate from Divine, which if you didn't already know, are a social enterprise and co-owned by cocoa farmers in Ghana. They're committed to doing business differently by using natural flavours and ingredients. To unfiltered olive oil from Zaytun, Zaytun source their tasty fair trade products from Palestinian farmers they support through fair trade by reinvesting 100% of their profits to further their mission.
You also have the chance to win fair trade coffee from Cafe Direct. This B Corp business work with passionate smallholder growers to improve livelihoods. And included is one of their best selling blends, Machu Picchu, which is grown on the mountainside of Peru. We also have a mixture of nuts from Liberation. So Liberation put community at the core of everything they do. They're a small interest company that's owned by smallholder farmers around the world who plant, nourish and pick the nuts they grow. All of their nuts have been carefully sourced from 11 fair trade cooperatives in Africa and South America. And we all know how important eating organic is. So you also have the chance to win organic chocolate from Chocolate and Love. Their award winning fair trade chocolate is sourced from the Caribbean, Central and South America and also Madagascar. Come with a variety of flavours which include pomegranate, rich dark chocolate and orange chocolate and also come in this gorgeous display box. There's also a chance to win some chocolate from Forest of Hope who provide fair trade, nut free and vegetarian friendly chocolate and also in 100% recycled packaging. They source their cocoa from the Gola rainforest in Sierra Leone. And for those who like savoury fair trade items, Just Trading Scotland is a fair trade enterprise who empowers producers and helping them gain a sustainable income. They have included their garlic beer bread, set up by Terrain and based on their grandmother's recipe, Barrett's Ridge beer bread is packaged at Yukama Holdings who provide ongoing training, mentorship and support to black owned micro enterprises. The distinctive Calio bags have been hand sewn by South African charity Death Hands at Work, having an extra personal touch. And finally, Tradecraft have included one of our favourite fair trade products, tea. So we started the fair trade movement with a small catalogue in 1979. Now in 2022, we continue to fight the injustices we see in society today, which are social, trade and environmental justice. Our tea is grown in East Africa and is blended by experts here in the UK. Our award-winning tea has also received the highest grade teas accolade of three stars. So lucky winners will have the chance to try our Earl Grey tea and also our breakfast blend tea. If the hamper excites you and you'd like to enter, there are eight chances to win. Each brand is hosting the Fair Trade Hamper Conduct Competition on their social media for you to enter. Thanks Rio, and I think Rio is going to pick up now. Hello everyone. Yes, so thank you all for joining us today and, and thank you um, to Mike, uh, the CEO of Federate Foundation for kicking the webinar off. It's, it's been great to hear the stories um, from the farmers directly to hear how it is affecting them, you know, growing the products we all know and love and use daily and how they are addressing the climate crisis. So I hope you enjoyed hearing directly from the producers um, and also from the seven of, of us um, today in the UK, you know, answering any of your questions regarding the climate crisis. If you've raised any questions um, that weren't answered today, there'll be an email sent from the Zoom account after today's webinar, which will provide the best contact details to reach out to the individual brand. So just wanted to say once again, thank you for joining us and we hope you enjoy um, all the other activities planned in the digital Choose the World You Want Festival hosted um, by the, Tradecraft, the Fair Trade Foundation um, this fortnight.